The Gospel for Trinity Sunday comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. We celebrate Trinity Sunday today. The mystery of the identity and union of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A God that's triune, one, and yet three in one. It's not a God that's schizophrenic. But it's a God that has multi-levels of understanding, function, connectiveness. Most of us don't like mysteries. At least not mysteries that can't be solved. Mysteries that are just to be experienced. And yet, the mystery of the Trinity to me is part of where we really have the ability to have faith. Something that's very, very important to me. And I believe important to, in a sense, what the understanding of Christianity and even more the essence of Christianity is all about. You see, we experience Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The three in one. The unity of it all. It's not a mystery like one that we solve. It's not a mystery of trying to put something together. But rather it's a mystery that's very similar to life and death. But even more to love. You know, I'm often amazed at why we love someone. Why they love us. Because it just doesn't make sense sometimes, does it? It doesn't make sense. A lot of the things that go on, we just can't fathom, we can't put together. And yet, that's what actually we are called to believe in when we refer to the Christian God. A mystery. A mystery of love. A mystery of experience. In the gospel that we have for this day, it's actually the story of the ascension once again. Jesus leads the eleven out to what we're told in another gospel, the Mount of Olivet. He goes out and he's with them. It says they came together, the eleven, that's everybody but Judas, and they worshipped him. But then it says very clearly, but some doubted. Then Jesus says to all of them, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. It's amazing. They worshipped him, but some doubted. I think so often in times we forget that some doubt it because it's in that doubt that actually faith takes root and it's in that doubt that I don't believe there's anybody in this world that can say well I don't doubt anything I know everything because if they do I believe they're lying you see doubt is part of faith we doubt ourselves we doubt our God we doubt the love that we both receive and give. There's an up and a down to it. But doubt doesn't cripple you. Doubt actually 
makes you rely more on God. And if you have a God that, in a sense, sometimes you can doubt, and yet somehow you stay connected, that isn't that mystery that you're experiencing even more deep and rich? It's that place when all of a sudden your emotions are such in the pits of things that you can say to yourself, I'm powerless. I don't know where this is going to go. All I have is right now, and I'm going to trust that God is with me in the moment now. It's funny because when he says to them, the Great Commission, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, naming the Trinity and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. He says it to all of them. It says, and they worshipped him, but some doubted. He doesn't look out and say, well, uh, Peter, you, James, John, you aren't doubting, so you get the Great Commission. But, you know, you, James, son of Alphaeus and, and Thaddeus, you don't because you're doubting. He gives it to them all. Which says to me very clearly that probably all of them were doubting. And all of them were having faith. You see, if we have just doubt, usually it cripples us. And if we have just faith, then sometimes I think we're naive. Because we're all kept on to what I refer to as a need-to-know basis. God doesn't give us the outcome. But it's in that place of not having the outcome that all of a sudden we become more like God and become more real. It's not those that are unshakable. You know, for a lot of us, for a lot of us, I think sometimes we think that there are certain people that are unshakable. That, you know, well, they're made of stone. Yet the truth of the matter is we all have clay feet. We all struggle. And I'll be up front with you. The struggles in this world today are incredible. You can make up your mind that it is this way or it is that way. I should wear a mask or I shouldn't wear a mask. But the truth of the matter is you still have to move forward with or without a mask. The question is, are you moving forward in love? Are you moving forward in trying to care for your brother, your sister? those who are less fortunate? Are you moving forward trying to serve God? Or are you moving forward simply to try and get your own agenda and make yourself feel righteous? The last line of this gospel that's so interesting to me is that after he gives the Great Commission, he says, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. A dear friend of mine, Stuart Jones, who died about 25 years ago, he was an incredible man. He had his doubts. He had his, his faith. He was just so real and true. I remember him looking at me before he died, and he said, the only promise Jesus really made is, lo, I'll be with you till the end of the age forever. It was there that even though he didn't understand the disease that was going to take his life, it was there that he didn't understand fully what it would look like on the other side of things. It was there that he realized that he didn't exactly know how this was all going to come together, but it was there that he knew, no, I know 
my Lord, and I know my Lord is going to be with me. He embraced the mystery. He experienced the mystery, and he didn't try and solve the mystery so he could celebrate the mystery of the person of Jesus Christ, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit being with him. It wasn't an imagination for him. I promise you that. It was a reality of knowing God. To know God is everything. You may think you did his will. You may think that you have followed in his ways. But if you don't know God, then you got squat. It's knowing God that gives us life. It gives us the ability to know we're never alone. It brings us out of the depths. It's just knowing them. It doesn't necessarily always mean that the situation we're in is going to change, but it does mean that the way we perceive the situation that we are in changes. Because when we know that we're with God in the midst of the situation, then we know that somehow it'll all come together. Mysteriously. And we'll never be orphaned again. On this Trinity Sunday, as you come to the Holy Eucharist, I pray that you come embracing a mystery and embracing the person of that mystery whose name is Jesus Christ. To take on that promise, Lo, I'll be with you always to the end of the age, and trusting. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen.